I'm Jim Rimbach, president of CX Global Media and host of the Customer Service Weekly podcast powered by Pace, the official podcast of National Customer Service Week, where our purpose is to help you ignite CX celebration all year. Each episode, I meet with senior leaders from top brands as they share their story on how they recognize and lead the people and solutions that help their organizations to deliver a customer experience that separates their organization from others so you can ignite your own CX celebration. And now, on to the show. Okay, CX Igniters, and welcome to the Customer Service Weekly podcast powered by Pace, which is the official podcast of National Customer Service Week. But hey, it's not just during the week. It's all year long because that's what we have to do in regards to appreciating and delivering excellent customer experiences. And today, I have on the show Bit Rambush with Dell Technology Services. He's going to share with us how they actually celebrate at Dell and how they carry forth that spirit of customer service all year long. Bit, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. Look forward to the conversation and uh, uh, great to meet you and, and uh, get to know the audience here. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I mean, we've already had a really good conversation uh, yeah. about some other things that if I, if I, I don't want to mention them because if I start doing that, we'll go down the wrong path. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you could share with the listeners and watchers a little bit about your background and your organization, I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah, sure. I've been with Dell for just over 21 years now. I've held a variety of positions. Um, I first started um, at Dell. I I actually stood up our enterprise logistics business, which was same day four hour parts logistics in support of our mission critical customers. Um, moved into a technical account management role. Again, very customer service focused on, on all of Dell's global 500 accounts. Uh, and then product introduction and uh, warranty and cost production as well. So how do you make more, you know, better quality products and, and make them serviceable and meeting customers' needs, it's not only just the customer, but the you know the inter the interaction from a, an end user perspective, whether that be field engineers or repair people, not just you know end user customers. Um, and now I'm actually working in online support and knowledge management. So I've got uh, responsibility for all of Dell's knowledge management across Dell Technologies uh, on the support side and, and all of our web content. And then we do a lot of, of course, omni-channel type work. Uh, in supporting that knowledge management framework uh, with, uh, with social media, uh, communities, uh, obviously then the traditional tech support, chat, phone, and email. Well, as you're talking, I mean, I start thinking about all these different parts of the, of the business and the operation and, and ways that they serve and connect and interact. Yeah. Some, you know, more facing, some a little bit less. However, I think we all need to work together. And that's one of the things that we talk about when you think about, you know, appreciating and recognizing in regards to customer service week. So how do you, or how have you celebrated customer service week? Well, we are definitely all about, uh, you know, the customer. And, uh, you know, we look at customer service really kind of two ways, at least from my organization, because I'm, I'm a support function. So my customers are, you know, obviously they're tech support engineers, they're field engineers, uh, they're deployment people, they're in the logistics supply chain doing repair work. Um, obviously, then we've got, you know, different consumers and, and commercial customers as well. Um, and so when we're thinking about serving our cons constituents there, we look at the employee satisfaction and we believe that's hugely important because of the content and the information that we serve up. We want that to be the place to go to, to help solve a customer issue. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, we're doing that across uh, different spectrum. So making information and knowledge available in the right place at the right time in the right format. Um, so making sure that you have you have to you have to really work with in a collaborative group across multiple different functions to make information flow, uh, to make it seamless, uh, certainly to make that user experience uh, you know work at the end of the day. And um, it really does take a lot of a collaborative point of view. Uh, and you can't get very territorial about it. Uh, you have to be willing to compromise and, and really see, uh, see the bigger picture at the end of the day so that you get to the best answer that the customer or that, that interaction is looking for. Well, and thanks for sharing that because uh, the perspective that you're talking about and what you're bringing, you know, is really what can differ from so many different operations. And also you even mentioned something about uh, you know, the, the, the top 500 accounts, you know, there's a different perspective that you have serving them 
and the whole mission critical aspects. And, and so when you start looking at the experiences that you've had with Dell, how is where you are now, and maybe a part of it is a timing thing and a customer expectation thing, but how has it kind of evolved and changed? Well, I, I, yeah, that's a really good question. And I think it's probably evolved more in the last seven or eight months uh, than uh, you know the previous time before that. And I, I think what we have, have seen in, in the COVID era is this concept of now digital transformation. And, and I know that that is a, probably an overused word in, in a lot of cases, but customer needs have, have definitely shifted. And because those needs have shifted, you know, their experiences, they, they want them to be seamless. And so we typically, the way I look at it, a customer interaction, it's, it's over a life cycle. And customers come to Dell for, we pretty much look at it's three reasons. I want to buy something, I want to learn something, or I want to solve something. But those experiences, they expect them to be the same. And they expect them the transition between buy and solve or buy and deploy or back and forth. They expect them to be able to be seamless uh, interactions. I would say historically, we have not done a great job at that. But in the current environment, what, what I'm seeing, uh, quite frankly, is those silos. We're forcing those silos to come down. And if, if you think about interactions today, uh, just like the one that we're having here, it's on Zoom. It's they're not in person anymore. Uh, so there's a lot more reluctance and and more uh, you know barriers put in because we've we've dwindled some of the face-to-face -face capabilities. So you know customers are relying on their ability to do it yourself. Right. So how, how do I get content or how do I get information into their hands so that they can do and solve things um, on their own? Whether that's purchasing or learning about how to do something or you know, solving a, a particular problem. And so if you're if you're not working on driving the, the barriers between those functional silos like sales, marketing and deployment and support, if you're not working on driving those barriers down to the minimum minimum or minimize them, it really makes creating a seamless customer experience very, very difficult. And, uh, and again, I get back to it's, it's collaboration. It's about people really seeing the long game and, uh, you know, not getting territorial about it, but sharing information and making sure that those experiences can be, can be seamless at the end of the day. Well, one of the things that you're talking about in regards to transformation, it, it, a lot of people could assume that we're talking about technology implementations, right? Yeah. However, there's a whole behavior change element to this that goes well beyond any type of technology. In fact, that can cause the technology to be to totally of no value, right? Yes. So it may be a good tool. So how yes. are you addressing that? Well, it's a, it's a great, I always look, there, there's really kind of four things we look at in, in terms of driving some of those uh, transformations, right? The, you, you typically hear people talk about people, process, and technology um, in those, in that context. I, I also like to add, there's, I think there's a fourth context to that, and it's really around culture, right? Which I think really kind of plays on your, on, on your term behavior, kind of the same thing. And you, you know, a, a great example inside Adele, we're, we're working on search capability and unified search and, and then really trying to, again, make those experiences seamless across multiple functions. And as we're deploying search technology, the, you know, team, the executive team made a decision, we're going to deploy search technology. We deployed the search technology and then the next thing you know, we're like, well, hey, our, our search is horrible. Well, why is it horrible? Well, we didn't, did we modify the processes? Did we make sure that the people understood it? Did we then make sure culturally, um, did we have the right atmosphere uh, to create a reason for change, the impetus for change? And, um, it, and it's part of our kind of our knowledge management ecosystem. And so one of the things that we, you know, as we're learning about the change in culture in a technical support or any support environment, our support engineers are really proud of the information that they hold. And uh, they're not necessarily uh, into the concept of sharing. They want to be seen as the subject matter expert. So now you're saying, I want information to flow and be transparent and we want two-way dialogue of that information. So you're, you're, you may be the subject matter expert, but we don't want everybody going to you. We want you to share that knowledge. And so you have to culturally say, I can't have you holding on to this. We need to make it available for the rest of the world. 
So you have to really get them involved and see that there's real benefit for them. So if they're seen as a subject matter expert because they're sitting in, say, Austin, Texas, well, they can still be the subject matter expert of the, of the great idea that now gets launched globally. So there's a, it's, it's all about how do you kind of play into the psyche and the, you know, the leadership and the development of, of, of those environments to get people to kind of play along and collaborate more. Well, that's part of what we're talking about uh, as well. When, when you refer to, you know, customer service week, it's, it's about, you know, appreciating the people who are delivering the service and, you know, having them to do what you're talking about, engage with that, own that, you know, help others. I mean, it's, it's all that spirit that we want to encourage and we want to carry forth. So yeah. some of the things that you guys have done at Dell Technologies in order to, you know, appreciate those people who are delivering the service. Oh, well, you know, certainly we rely on a lot of customer feedback and, and we get a, a, you know, a lot of that, obviously. And, and uh, we've got, you know, uh, you know, intelligence and, and social monitoring and things like that that help us help us go in and monitor those things, like what things are going well, what things do we need to work on and try to use that as kind of an early warning indicator um, in the different forums uh, that we look at. Um, but, you know, when we get specific call outs, whether it be from email or some of the social media uh, places, uh, we do make a make a big deal out of we have kind of a wall of wall of fame, you know, where we put up pictures. Uh, now we're doing it virtually, obviously. Uh, but, you know, we highlight, you know, the customer service advocate of the week and something that somebody did really well. Um, and, and we don't necessarily always focus on on maybe like the frontline agent that maybe you know, had to, you know, he stayed up 24 hours in a row and got a customer up and running. Those are amazing uh, things that our frontline folks do. But even in the support side, we also want to make sure the people that are enabling those experiences to take place, how do you recognize them as well so that they feel engaged in making those experiences? You don't ever want to have to have a customer or, or a, a front end tech support or a field support person I have to make what I call a dive and catch because the process is broken, right? You want, uh, you want, I, you know, I want to know, well, what could we have done to prevent the dive and catch? Uh, and so, the, and so how do you make sure that you keep everybody engaged and feeling as part of that, that overall delivery focus and the outcomes that, that we're looking for? Well, and I think you just kind of mentioned, how do you do that? And now that we are, well, first of all, field services has somewhat just inherent uh, issues associated with proximity. I mean, I've got people yes. all over the place. Also, when you start dealing with, you know, higher tiers, um, you also have, mm -hmm. you know, some proximity issues because, hey, the subject matter expert on that one is way over there, right? Yeah. Uh, so when you start thinking about COVID, when you start thinking of your inherent, you know, proximity situation, you know, what are you doing now in order to be able to appreciate that work besides, you know, the wall of fame? Yeah, well, to, to appreciate the work, well, I would say we've also changed uh, in a lot of cases in terms of how we do the work. So we are starting to, uh, we've, we've started to invest a lot more into video technology, um, whether that be uh, videos on, you know, how to replace, manage, maintain a system. Uh, we're also experimenting with augmented reality. Um, and then we're also doing, you know, like what I would call, you know, your traditional FaceTime type work where you can do actually, you know, face-to-face -face type things and we, can and we can show customers. So how do you, how are we trying to create a more sticky um, engagement with that customer? And then, you know, ultimately using that, those types of feedbacks uh, that we get from them and those interactions uh, to, to continue to, you know, make those investments. And, and I would say as an example, just from a, from a website and from a technology perspective, like just visits to our support site have gone up by 30 plus percent mm. in the last six months. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've seen the, uh, we've seen the, uh, the, the consumption of videos, of uh, manuals. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'll break for a second there. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So we've seen uh, the consumption of videos and manuals um, and different, those types of uh, technologies start to really uh, take off for us. And, and so the consumption of those things is going up. We have another uh, tool that we have. It's called a procedure generator called Solve uh, that'll, that really starts to get into some of the higher end things. So we have to be on the phone guiding customer through complex procedures. Um, we're doing those through FaceTime and through 
procedures that get generated. And uh, our, our teams are seeing the, our frontline teams are seeing the importance of these types of new technologies and getting integrated in terms of how they're delivering uh, support to their customers. So, uh, you know, we're, again, we're recognizing the need for that and our engineer, frontline engineering teams are recognizing the need for that and they're getting great feedback from customers and we just continue to, to build upon that. Well, as you start talking, I start thinking about things that you've done. You've, tar- you've talked about these transformations. You've talked about the culture and the behavior and all that. You know, is there something that you're sitting here today and saying and looking back, yep, we'll never do that again? Well, uh, yeah. I, you know, I would say, you know, six or seven months ago, I, you know, I vividly remember it, as I'm sure everybody does. I think March 12th, we were in the office, and March 13th, we went home. And... You know, I, I look at how we typically look at the customer service world. Uh, and, you know, it's always been talked about, hey, we can, agents can work from home and people can work from home. And, and it used to be, no, 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 we need the community of people sitting in the cubes and in the office and collaborating and working well together and, and things like that. And if we ever work from home, it's going to be five or 10 years. Uh, we sent our entire workforce home in a matter of five days. Uh, we got laptops out to all of our tech support engineers. Uh, we stood up, you know, increased, uh, you know, networking capabilities and security to applications and, and things like that. So we basically, I, in, in my personal opinion, we have to, I think we have to challenge what we think is norm. Uh, there's, I would have never thought you could, you could drive yourself to work, a work from home environment, become as productive, more productive, and still drive some of the same results, particularly with customer experience um, in, in the fashion that we did, certainly at the speed we've done. And so I think what that tells me, we have to really challenge the norms in terms of some of the breakthrough uh, capabilities that we say, we can't do that. We can't do that. Well, presented with the right circumstances, we've, we have found we can almost do anything. Well, and I think you kind of hit on one of the things that we talk about when we refer to myths and misconceptions. Sometimes when we're forced, you know, those things get challenged really darn quickly and get put to work. Yeah. Um, but if you th- start thinking about the customer experience, you know, is there something that now in your mind you're like, oh, that is absolutely overrated? Oh, uh, customer experience being overrated. I, you know, I, I don't think so. I, I think we are... I think we are in a, a hyper growth pattern right now. I, I don't know that um, that there's anything that is overrated in the customer experience world right now. I think, you know, unless you're talking, uh, I think underrated is the understanding of the requirements around digital transformation. I mean, we're in the process right now of probably going through the fastest technological change that we have ever seen in our lifetimes. And, you know, people talk about Y2K and some of the things we saw in the 90s and the early 2000s. We're, we're moving at a speed infinitely faster than that. And it's not going to slow down. We're going to see the, you know, the advent of uh, 5G coming along, uh, the implementation of IoT. Uh, people talk about public cloud uh, a lot, right? So you hear about Amazon and Azure and Google Cloud and things like that. Well, there's also, you know, there's a sprawling amount of data that is going to be um, also, uh, you know, come about as 5G and IoT and things like that. There's also companies that are going to have to deal with that data and they're not going to want to put it in a public cloud. So you're going to see data, I think, is almost literally like the new oil. So it becomes your intellectual property. How and what you do with your data, how you collect it, how you analyze it, the types of insights that you're driving from it. I think are going to drive, you know, very targeted personalization, um, additional, you know, capabilities and insights to your customers that your customers are expecting you to know what they want. Uh, And I think that that desire is going to only increase uh, no matter who or what company you engage in. And so if you're not thinking about digital transformation and data science and the, how you're using your data to drive an intellectual um, or I should say a competitive advantage, I think you're definitely, you're, you're going to get left behind. And, you're, and that's, your customers are just going to come to ex- expect that experience. And I think what you kind of are alluding to there is one of the things that 
in this in this situation, um, in this current reality that a lot of people are talking about in regards to, you know, feverish levels of brand switching, you know, uh, yeah. loyalty, you know, has plummeted. Um, and I think what you're talking about will be a contributing factor that, to that when you start talking about the customer experience, because others are going to be raising the bar. And if you don't, they're going to switch. Oh, I, I, I completely agree. And, and again, they expect you, you know, when I interact with you, I want, you should know what I'm looking for, right? If I'm, you know, it's no different uh, than, you know, Amazon and Netflix and, and things like that. Um, and I think that those expectations are, those are just entry points, tickets to entry. If you're not thinking about how you accelerate those insights and expand them into the, the product experience, the service experience, um, you know, the, you know, the recycling of the product and the renewal of the product and service, you are definitely going to be left behind. And there's companies, I think today it's, you know, we, we're in a cash um, constrained environment right now, just because of, of what's going on. There are companies that are going to invest now and that will come out in the long run. And then there's companies that are not going to invest and they are going to, I think, run into troubles in being able to service their customers because they're going to be so far behind in those capabilities uh, that, that they so much expect. Well, and with all that said, you start talking about this rapid, you know, um, you know, acceleration uh, and the need in order to not just, you know, keep up, but, you know, try to stay ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. You talk about the culture change. You talk about all these different factors. And if you start putting that into proper context, think about it as almost like an ecosystem. Are there some things that you used to believe about the customer experience uh, that now when you look at it, it says, man, I, I, I was, I was way off. That's just not true anymore. Yeah, I, I would say when I, so when I came over, I've been in the role that I'm in now for just over four years. And I, I really did not appreciate um, the infrastructure of data and the experience that our customers see from an online perspective um, and how, um, how important that relationship is. And it, and it drives, you know, it drives a relationship digitally and it drives a relationship in person. Um, I always thought of the customer service environment as being more, you know, it's a people, it's a people business. We're always told, right? Well, yeah, it is a, it is a people business, but we also want to put the information in front of the people uh, at the right time to help them take care of those customers. And so I, I think I really, I really underappreciated the, you know, the information and the data and the amount of information, the type of information that our customers or even our support professionals need in order to support those customers or have customers support themselves. You know, as you're saying that, I start thinking about the whole humanity uh, associated with that. And I think, especially in the tech type of sectors, uh, you know, the whole, you know, tech, tech writing, tech content, tech information, um, you know, it can be, it can seem, you know, quite, you know, um, well, less engaging than other types of copy and information, right? right? Uh, so yeah. what we do know, though, is if people do have the information, like I think you're finding and you actually you talked about in your numbers, mm -hmm. if it's delivered to them in a way that they can consume it and it seems more, you know, human, you know, connecting by nature instead of so technical, um, it, it is almost like a person is taking care of them. Yeah, it's a human experience too, right? So yeah, there is a, you know, I, I think what we are going to also start to find, you know, and the information and the content that's out there, uh, and we're going through this right now. Um, I can remember we had a, we had a challenge with uh, one of our chip suppliers and it, it, it had a security issue and we had to get information out and it was in one of our consumer systems. And so we said, you know, you need to go download this information in order to protect your system. Well, it was written in engineering speak, you know, and, and now you've got consumers uh, that are going out trying to read it. And you're like, well, I have no idea what this is. Right. There are some, and somebody that wrote that said, man, this is this is spot on. You know, this is absolutely, you know, everybody is going to understand it. And so, you know, what we're what we're trying to do in, in that human experience piece, right, is you're looking at the behavior, you're looking at the customer journeys and the patterns and things like that, but you're also trying to, 
we're also trying to, you know, I guess, categorize, if you will, the type of information that we're putting in front of somebody. So we're looking at different types of personas. Are you an IT professional? Are you a data center engineer? Are you a software engineer? Are you a consumer? Are you a student? What type of consumer are you? And, you know, so we think about how do we create content and that can be served up again, based upon what we know about you and what our history of interactions are. We know we're starting to gain that level of intelligence. We're way, you know, we still have a long way to go uh, in making you know, that to be Nirvana, but we're at least thinking about how we do that. And then how do we do that in a digital world so that I don't have to have an army of people sitting around trying to write and rewrite content. Yeah. I mean, for me, oh, there's so many things of what you're saying. And I think it goes back to uh, the phrase that you uh, were referring to and that it's, it's just a human interaction. It's more of a human interaction. It's, you know, cause I think we're seeing all the statistics associated with, you know, how people come to make decisions. Even um, I right. showed a story about my, my call center coach, a leadership Academy is I had somebody call me and say, Hey, we want to enroll 20 supervisors in your, in your virtual Academy. And, and I'm like, uh, who are you? <laughs> their decision without me even yeah, engaging yeah. with them and they're like and they're right. telling me well we looked at all of our options and I'm like how is that even possible I mean it's but it happens that's exactly yeah. what happens. exactly so when you start looking at you know people who may be wanting to get into you know that that senior level customer experience role and be responsible for, you know, the direction and, you know, the, the culture and all of those, you know, types of things that we need. You talked about those pillars, those four, yeah. what kind of advice would you give them? Well, I, I would tell you there's two type two types of people. One at me as a leader that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, obviously I, I want to know there's some basic things like how well do you interact with customers? What's your, what's your sense of empathy and, and things like that. When I'm hiring people for my team, those are kind of the basic things that uh, that you want to know. Are you know are they kind and friendly? Or do they have a passion for what they're doing and and the environment that they're in? I think the next thing um, I'm also looking for people with different perspectives, right? So when you think about uh, people talk about diversity in terms of male, female, etc., uh, I'm looking also for adversity in experience, and I think. You know, when, so when I'm hiring folks, my background is I've done logistics, I've done account management, I've done field services, I've done product introduction. So I have a, I'm not an expert in any of those things, but I think I bring a unique perspective in terms of what it looks like in each of those different uh, verticals, if you will, in terms of delivering service to a customer. Um, at the same time, you need people that are you know, very, very deep in their understanding of certain capabilities. Like I want somebody that's really deep in a tech support environment that knows the CRM, the call center applications and how to manage it. And I want scheduling and, and forecasting and things like that. Or somebody that's really good in the, in the supply chain space. Are they an industry expert? Do they, do they help drive things within the industry? So those are, those are kind of two things I'm looking for. Just bringing that level of diversity and then obviously there's global diversity and things like that and cultural diversity that I think you, you, you should also look for. Um, the other thing I think when, I, when I'm also, what I find to be very beneficial is the more involved I get into the community of customer service, I meet people and see people and hear things. So I'm looking also for people that have an appetite for learning, right? So, or engaging. So are you, are you sitting in your, you know, at, at home now, are you sitting in your cube or are you out trying to learn new things, whether it's new capabilities or technologies, or are you trying to gather bet, better insights from different industries and different companies? Are you creating relationships outside of the company that really help to further your thinking? So I would say, you know, number one, you got to have a passion for what we do. In the customer service world, I always say nobody's ever picking up the phone and saying, hey, you guys are awesome today right? It's always starts out with you're trying to solve a problem. Uh, so you have to have, you know, you have to understand that it's all the, the starting of your conversation is probably never going to be a good one. So you have to have a passion of serving the customer and serving people. Um, and then you've got to have kind of that desire just to, to stay involved and continue to learn and, and find new ways of doing things. Okay. So then you, we have those people, they're in the right role. What would yeah. you give them and think about this looking forward. What advice would you give them about delivering an excellent customer experience all year long? 
Well, delivering a customer experience all year long, you know, number one, uh, under promise and over deliver. Um, always keep communication. I always tell um, when I was managing our technical account management teams and, and working through escalations uh, and things like that with customers, like you can, if I don't know what you're doing, you can assume I think you're doing nothing. Right. So um, be very communicative about what you're doing, why you're doing it. Uh, another thing I always tell my teams is I expect, you know, four things, actions, owners, dates and outcomes. And I expect that it's very crystal clear. So, you know, most people, I think, in a customer service environment, um, if you can, can communicate clear expectations, let them know that you have a passion and an empathy for what they're dealing with and how you're helping them to deal with it. And you can communicate those expectations very clearly. I think, you know, 99 times out of a hundred, I think you're going to be very successful. And um, so, uh, you know, again, it's, you know, passion, communication, expectations and delivering, do what, do what you say you're going to do every day. Bit, I've had fun with you today. Can you please share with the CX Igniters how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, um, absolutely. So I'm, I'm definitely on LinkedIn. Um, so uh, I'm available out there. Uh, I'm on Twitter. If you want to engage with me on Twitter, I wouldn't say I'm a big Twitter handler user, but, um, you know, certainly that's probably the best uh, place to do that. Or you can always uh, get in touch with me at Dell. Uh, so it's bit underscore Rambush at Dell.com is my email address and love to, you know, engage in any conversations or questions. Uh, and then, you know, certainly want to share insights and best practices with anybody that wants to. We're all trying to get better for the same reason. Bit Rambush, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom and helping us to carry forth that customer service spirit all year long. Thanks, Jim. Really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Customer Service Weekly Podcast. Please rate, review, subscribe, follow, and share the Customer Service Weekly Podcast and register for a free membership at customerserviceweekly.org to get the latest updates on how you can help ignite the CX spirit everywhere.